Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Go So Beautiful. My name's Becky, and this is episode 5 of Friday Sews, the evening edition. If you're new to my channel, I hope you'll sit back and enjoy a little chat about sewing and some things I've made. And if you've been subscribing, I really appreciate your support and hope you will enjoy this week's edition of Friday Sews. So I had a little bit of trouble getting things done this week when in fact I had actually done a lot of things in my sewing room. I just hadn't made much, but that led me to decide to make something last night. And as luck would have it, I was doing very well and I went to bed at a reasonable hour thinking, oh, I can finish this up in the morning, no problem. And then I'll shoot my video, edit it and get it published by the afternoon. Well, it is now 4.15. The simple sew that I had planned to do had some problems. So let me tell you about that. Well, first let me show you what I made. I did make, earlier in the week, these shorts. They are the Luna Loungewear shorts from Love Notions Patterns. And I had cut these out a while ago, and when I looked at the things I had to sew, I thought, I should really work on stuff that's already cut out. So. Um, and I made them to go with this top, which is um, another Love Notions pattern. I think it's the classic tee. And I made this for the Sew a Summer T-shirt um, challenge. So I made these up. They went together very easily. And um, I'll put a picture of me wearing them with my shirt. Um, and I really like the way they fit. Um, this fabric, however, is... It's like super stretchy, but it doesn't really have a lot of recovery. I don't know, some. It just feels like a really loose, loosely woven fabric. Um, and I don't really wear shorts for pajamas that much. So I did buy some extra of this color fabric and I'm probably gonna make some capri pants. So I had made those and I had worked on some other things. I have mentioned in a previous video that I was gonna take the Love Notions Sunday romper apart and make it into a dress because I had already cut out the skirt and I was gonna make the shorts into just a regular pair of shorts. Well, I thought about it and I thought, you know, they've already seen the Sunday romper and the skirt's not gonna make that, the dress isn't gonna look that much different so I really wanted to sew something else so last night I decided to take some fabric from my stash which I have quite a bit and sew something up um, really quick so I found this new look 6871 notice the word easy with an asterisk and I picked out um, some really pretty, you can see here, this um, kind of gingham seersucker with an embroidery um, eyelet um, on it. And I had just enough fabric and I cut it out and I started sewing it up last night and it was going together so well. I mean, I was like, wow, this is really quick. So it got a little bit late and I thought, I'll just finish this up in the morning. So I get up this morning and get ready to sew and um, it was a little bit more involved than I thought. And I got to the part, I had finished the yoke and I got to the part where you have to hem the sleeves and it said to do a narrow hem. Well, I had cut one of the sleeves, the hem was just a little bit short uh, fabric and I thought I'll get my rolled hammer foot out which I purchased not long ago and use that to do a narrow hem so I started doing it and it was 
you have to feed the fabric into the foot. Um, if you've ever used a rolled hemming foot and it was a little tricky at first, but I, I went ahead and sewed about three or four inches before I finally said, this isn't working out so well. So I took it off and I started to unpick it and I realized for some reason the stitching was like the tiniest stitch you could possibly make. It was, it was maybe 1.0 and I could not get my seam ripper to, um, I really couldn't even get the, the seam ripper to pick up a stitch. So I had to pull the threads and basically pull the stitches out one at a time. It took me over an hour to do it before I finally got them done. And I was pretty mad at myself. <laughs> and I thought about just leaving it, but I really wanted to finish it because it, it's, it's such a cute top. So I went ahead and finished picking it out, ironed the, the hem out, and then I decided to use this um, seam binding and it worked well. Um, <clears throat> then <clears throat> all I had to do was gather the sleeve up and stitch it to the bodice. Well, that took a little bit of extra time too, um, but long story short, I got it made and here it is. So um, it's got flutter sleeves, it's got a split neck, and I am really proud of myself for this beautiful v-neck that I did. I found this fabric in my stash to line the yoke um, and that was one thing that I had a little conundrum about. Um, the Because the there's eyelet here I didn't want and the the yoke has got interfacing on it. I didn't really want that to show through. Um, <clears throat> so I ironed the interfacing to the actual facing of the bodice of the yoke and you can see it a little bit but it's it at least it doesn't you know it's not sticking to the back of the eyelet um, and after thinking about it, after making this up I realized too that this fabric that I used um, to line the yoke is just a little bit heavy I probably could have gotten away with not using interfacing but it's done and it looks fine so I'll show you a picture of me wearing it. Um, I think the binding on the sleeves hem makes it stick out a little bit, but probably when I wash it, it'll soften up and it'll, it'll um, lay nicely after that. So lesson learned here, I'm not going to put pressure on myself to make things just for a video. Um, I did, I am glad I made this because I didn't need some tops and I wanted to use my stash, but I'm just going to sew at my own pace, as you all know. Okay, other things that went on in my sewing room. Um, <clears throat> I bought some, I bought some things that I think would be helpful and help make my sewing go a little faster. One of them is this, let me take it out of the package, a bias tape maker set. I got this from Amazon and they have several different sets there in a range of prices. I think I got this one for $7.95 maybe. <clears throat> anyway, a lot of people complained that it didn't have instructions, but the instructions are on the back and there are lots of YouTube videos that show you how to do this. And the reason I got this is because I've, you can make bias binding without this little folding thing but um, I burn my fingers a lot when I do that because you have to iron it so I thought this might be helpful. Another thing I got is this little stash and store mini box and I think I got this from sewingmachinesplus.com or maybe I'll put a link in the description but I normally have my tools just laying in a little tray next to my sewing machine and I realized that that was a little bit you know I always had to pick pick through stuff to get to it so I thought this would be useful and now everything I need 
that I have right next to my sewing machine is just real easy to pick up. It's got this little honeycomb grid that you can, and it's kind of rubber, so you can just put all of your tools in there and they stand up nice and neat next to your sewing machine. I also had to get a new iron. My, I had a while back a Rowenta iron that I ordered from, <clears throat> I think it was Woot.com, which sells refurbished stuff, some stuff that's new in the box and just didn't sell. And it was a, I think it was a Project Runway iron and it worked so well. I really liked it. And I, I had it for quite a while, but then I dropped it and the door that you closed to, op to pour in the water for the steam had broken off and, or at least it, it wouldn't stay latched. So I had duct taped it and was using it like that for quite a while. And, um, it kept coming unstuck. So finally I said, okay, I'm going to get a new iron. So I got rid of that one and I bought another Rowenta iron from Target and it was a little bit cheaper and it, it didn't work well at all. So I returned that one and I just started using a regular, you know, sunbeam iron or something or the one we had. And that one was working okay, except that it didn't have very much variation in the heat setting and a lot of times it would melt like the polyester thread that I used in my stitching in my serger so I really didn't like using that one and I went back to our old steam iron and the plug got broken on that it um, apparently it had a swivel plug on it like where it attaches to the iron and it quit working and I couldn't figure out what was wrong until I finally started wiggling that and it would work, but you had to hold it in position. And my husband said, well, I could probably fix that, but he, he never fixed it. <laughs> so I went ahead and ordered another Rowenta iron and, um, I did, you know, I looked up reviews of the iron. I looked up reviews of several irons and um, the one I wanted is called an Olisa iron, but that thing, I could not find it in stock anywhere. So if you know where you can get a regular sized Olisa iron, I would love to know. Um, I, I'm not sure. I think it's a good quality iron and I did um, request an email from one website that that's, you know, sells those irons, but um, I think they probably get, they run out of stock as soon as they get them in. So I went ahead and purchased another Rowenta from Amazon. It seems to be working okay. It does seem like it takes a little bit of time to warm up, but it's, it's working better than my other one. So that was another sewing item that I got for my sewing room. As I'd mentioned, um, I am planning to do a sewing room makeover. And I think I'm going to have to um, really get to work on that. Um, I had hoped to get my room painted and not have to paint it myself, but we've had an unexpected expense in that we had to get a new dishwasher. So I don't know that hiring somebody to paint the room is affordable right now. And if I want to get it done soon, I might have to do it myself. Leads me to... Um, what's been going on here that I had kind of a busy week earlier this week I published a video of my fabric and pattern haul if you haven't seen that I would love it if you would check it out um, the filming of that went great the editing process was I, I was in tears <laughs> to be honest and it wasn't necessarily the editing it was uploading the film from my phone and sometimes I feel like I just don't know anything about computers, but it turned out it wasn't my fault. It, it turned out after my, I got my husband to help me that the phone, the files on my phone were corrupted. So whenever I would upload something, I would pick one thing 
and for some reason another picture would show up in its place and it just drove me bananas. So finally, he, in all his IT wisdom, was able to get the film uploaded. We erased all the file, picture files on my phone that were corrupted and saved the ones. There actually were a lot that, that didn't make it, but we did save the ones that were not corrupted. And so hopefully that fixed the problem. But that really, that took a long time, and um, I think that just kind of made my week um, a little bit busier. Um, in addition to that, our poor dog, who is now 12 years old, started acting kind of lethargic, and we ended up taking her to the vet and found out that she has an infection and she's lost weight, poor thing. Um, so we had to, we've had to be, we've had to take care of her. She's got to take some antibiotics, which if you've ever had to give an animal medicine, you really have to be creative and either hide it in their food or mash it up or something. Um, but she's been able to take it. She's still acting a little bit um, funny so we're going to see how she does this weekend, and if she's not improving, then um, we'll have to take her back to the vet on Monday. So that was another thing that kind of put a monkey wrench in my plans for this week. Other than that, um, oh, Monday, and I mentioned this, I had joined a gym, and I went and worked out with the trainer on Monday, and darn if he didn't kill me. He didn't kill me. I just, I'm just not used to some of those exercises that he's having me do. And I, I can do them fine when I'm there, but then the next day, the next 24 hours to 48 hours, my muscles are really sore and stiff. And I guess it's just my age and I'm trying not to feel old. I was thinking about this a lot. Um, why do we say a person is so many years old? Why don't we just say this person is so many years of age? Or I have one doctor I used to work for that would say, this is Mrs. So-and-so and she is 55 years young. I think that would be a lot better way of saying it than you're so 55 years old. Anyway, while I was training, this other young trainer um, was kind of chatting with us and um, I asked her, I said, well, how old do you think I am? And she thought for a minute and then she looked at me and she said, well, I think you're probably about my mom's age. <laughs> I said, oh, really? Well, how old is your mom? And she said, you know, it's embarrassing. I really don't know, but I think she's in her 50s. And I thought, oh, okay. And it... It didn't hurt my feelings, but it made me realize I used to pride myself on looking a lot younger than I really am. For instance, when I was 30 or 40, people would guess that I was 10 years younger. And I suppose that's still true, but at the same time, I, I don't feel like I'm 60 years old. I feel more like a 30-year-old or a 40-year-old. But I guess I look older than that, which is okay. Um, there's a great uh, hashtag on Instagram called so over 50, hashtag so over 50. And it's all about embracing women or people who are over age 50 and that um, we can wear whatever style clothing we want we can still we still look as beautiful as we did when we were 30 or 40 and i really enjoy um participating or you know seeing the things that they post i guess it's just been a little bit hard for me to realize that i'm getting older and i i guess i look older but um i don't care 
I, I put this top on today and I thought maybe this is too young for me. It's gingham. It's got fluttery sleeves, but I don't care. I like the way it looks and it's comfortable and it's pretty. So that's just a little food for thought. Let me know what you think. I appreciate you watching this video and tuning in. I apologize for the ramble and um, hope you will hit that subscribe button and the like button. Give me a thumbs up and hit the notification bell so you can see when I post new videos. I hope you all have a great weekend. I want you to sew lots of beautiful things and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.